The first step in manufacturing a PCB is to print out your design onto a sheet of acetate. You can see here I've printed the design twice on two sheets and then stuck them one on top of the other. This is to make sure that the black regions are especially black so that when I shine light through this PCB mask, light will only pass through the areas where there is no ink. The next stage is to cut your PCB to size. This is a piece of special board. It is fiberglass on one side and then there is a thin layer of copper. On top of the copper is a substance called photoresist. This will be broken down by ultraviolet light and is then able to be removed by the developer. Where no ultraviolet light shines onto the photoresist, it will stay behind and protect the copper from the etchant. We're going to cut the PCB down to size using this special guillotine. Like so. Now that we've got our board the right size, we can move on to exposing it to UV light. When I peel off the plastic protective coating here, you will now see the copper coated with this greenish substance. That's the photoresist. That's what's going to protect the copper. So I'm going to take my design, I'm going to place it over the board, and then I can put that complete unit into the ultraviolet light box and expose it to UV light. So this is our light box. You can see it has two fluorescent tubes. Now fluorescent tubes always emit ultraviolet light and it's a special coating on the inside of the tubes that turns that ultraviolet light into visible light. In these tubes that coating has been left off so it's going to emit ultraviolet light. We've got our board and our acetate and we're going to place them face down on, uh, on the UV light box, close the lid, tighten it up and set the timer to two minutes. Once our board's ready, we can open up the box and take it out. You'll see that at this stage, the image is just starting to appear in the, in the layer. It's pretty tri tricky to see, but you'll just start to see the image appearing. Now that we've exposed our board to UV light, it's ready to place into the developer solution. This has already been diluted, but it's still a harmful substance, so you do need to be careful and should always wear gloves when handling it. We're going to tip out the, UV, uh, the developer solution into this plastic tray. We're then going to place our PCB into the developer solution, slosh it around and leave it there for about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, here goes into the developer solution and you'll see as I start to slosh it around fairly quickly the developer will remove the photoresist where it's been exposed to the ultraviolet light and you'll see that our circuit is starting to magically appear. A bit more sloshing around and we're nearly there. Once it's fully developed, we should now clearly be able to see our circuit board in the photoresist and we're just going to rinse it off under the tap to get rid of any development solution left. Now it's time to put our board into the etch tank. The etchant, which lives in here, is a form of acid that's going to erode away, corrode away the copper. So we place our board into this netting, drop it back into the tank of warm acid and then we can turn the bubbles on. We're going to set our timer to anything from 7 minutes if I'm using a really fresh new batch of etchant up to about 15 minutes if it's starting to get a bit tired. Here you can see I've set it for 11 minutes. 
Once your timer goes off, take it out and have a quick look at it. Try to make sure that all of the copper that's meant to be gone is gone. If it isn't quite there, put it back in for another couple of minutes. Once you're totally happy with it, turn the bubbles off and put it into the water tank. At this point, you can spray water onto your design until you've cleaned off all of the acid. And there you have it, you've etched yourself a PCB. So the next stage in this process is going to be drilling out all of the holes in the PCB using one of these custom PCB drills made by Hampton School. It's got a one millimetre drill bit inside it. And it's simply a case of lining up the drill with the hole, drilling all the way through and repeating for every hole on the board. It's really important to get these holes lined up because components like the chip holder and the headers down the side really do require a very accurate lining up of the pins. Now that we've finished drilling the holes on the PCB, you can see all of them are done there. It's now time to apply our silk screen layer. Now commercial boards have a silk screen printed in a single colour, but we're going to do something a bit more interesting. We're going to use a process known as dye sublimation to take an image that we have printed out using special inks and we're going to heat it up using a heat press and transfer that image across onto our PCB. The first step in that process is to line up our board with the design. Now, if your board is exactly the right size, it should fit over the rectangle. However, as you can see, there's a little bit of an issue with width here, so we're going to go in really close and try and line up the ink through the holes. You probably won't be able to make that out on the video, um, but that's what I'm going to do next. Once we've lined that up perfectly, we're then going to use this Captain tape, which is a special heat-resistant tape, and we're going to tape it down to the bit of paper. So this is the heat press. It's just warming up for us now. What you can see is that there is a large heated bed here. That's going to get up to 180 degrees. And then there is a soft surface onto which we are going to place our board with the printed image on top of it. Place it, printed image up, put a Teflon sheet over the top. That's to prevent anything from sticking to the heated panel. And then once it reaches 180 degrees, what we're going to do is we're going to close the lid. The timer will automatically start. It's going to count down for two minutes, after which time the ink should have transferred from our printout onto our PCB. See you in two minutes. Obviously, I meant to say three minutes. As you can see, we're now only a few seconds away. It's going to beat to tell us that it's ready. It's pretty hot now, so I've put a glove on to remove my piece of work. It's important not to touch the heated bed as I try and remove it. It is going to be pretty hot for quite a while, and it's pretty difficult to remove with your gloves on. But once you get and peel the printed paper away, what you should see is that our image has transferred nicely across onto our printed circuit board. And that's it. That's the completed process.